are you doing today? Today, we're doing everything. Nisa Bell here. So I work on and play a lot of guitars on this channel, but if I'm being honest, my primary fretted instrument of choice is actually bass. There's just something I've always loved about the role bass plays in an ensemble or an arrangement. And you know that feeling when you sync up with like a really solid drummer? Yeah, there's nothing quite like it. Now, don't get me wrong, I love playing guitar, but if you and I were ever gonna start a band, I call dibs on playing bass. While my love of low end always made it pretty easy to find people to jam with, it did pose a bit of a challenge compositionally and as a singer songwriter. Here's a little look into what my writing process process looks like. I typically start with my melody. Bum, 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 bum. Then I write my bass line to reinforce that. Bum, 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 bum. And finally, I fill out the harmonic space using chords or arpeggiations or whatever suits the song best. So when I would sit down and write, I found myself constantly switching instruments. My guitars couldn't quite go low enough and my bass didn't have the upper register I needed for chording. Enter Penelope. My bass six. If you're a bit unfamiliar with this instrument, she's essentially a short scale six string bass. So this way I get all the low end I need to work on my bass parts, but at the same time, a full extended range to figure out my harmonies. Plus with the added vibrato, pickup combinations and strangle switch, she has enough flexibility to be my go-to singer songwriter instrument. So with all these sounds and tones and everything else, this should be everything I'm looking for, plus a little bit more, right? Well, after months of writing and practicing in one really rainy jam session, I had to come to terms with the fact that I was just not getting what I wanted from this instrument. Nothing was sound or feeling quite the way I wanted it to, and to be honest, I just wasn't really having fun playing. Which led me to ask myself the question, what exactly do I want? And after a few more weeks of plucking around, I had my answer, everything. I want everything. I want clear and articulate pickups with a wide enough frequency range to handle my low and high end. I want a bridge and vibrato system that's expressive, stays in tune, and works with the Fender Mute. And I want round round strings that can handle bass tuning in one meg pots so that I can cut through any mix whether I'm recording or playing live. So when I say we're doing everything, I mean that we're gonna make Penelope the versatile instrument I know she can be. So I got to work getting my plans and parts together, but I have to admit, I was starting to get a little bit apprehensive. I mean, this was gonna be the most work I've ever done on an instrument at one time, and it was also turning out to be my most expensive project to date. And while I've done all these mods separately in the past, I've never worked on a six style instrument. And I have no idea if there's anything I need to keep in mind or do differently when compared to working on a guitar or a standard bass. So I needed to talk to someone who had experience with these basses. Someone who knows the history of this instrument and all the things that make playing it and working on it unique. Someone who's an expert on all things offset guitar. I got my bass six right here. Oh, you got one too. Is that yeah. a VM? This is the VM, yeah. Yeah, this is a VM. Hey! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I enlisted the help of the one and only Mike Adams. What is the base six? Where does it come from? Well, that's a great question, because the, I mean, you can see in the body, there's lineage. There's the Stratocaster P bass sort of upper horn thing. There's the rounded lower bout of a Jazzmaster or a Jaguar. We got this, we got, we got the Jaguar coils, we got the Jaguar control plates, the four switch plate here for pickup selection. This precedes the Jaguar by just a little bit. The, the Bass 6 came out in 61 with a different set of pickups, and then the Jaguar version came in 62 or 63. It comes from this whole like Jazz Master offset thing, Leo Fender's idea that this is gonna be the, the top of the line instrument embraced by jazz musicians worldwide, uh, which sadly did not happen as we know. I mean, how do you, you use it? Like, do you use it typically as a bass? Do you use it as somewhere in between? Do you use it in your Norwegian death ska band? Uh, my, what, what would ska sound like on this way? <laughs> I, I, I hesitate to call myself a proper bass player. I can, but I play it very much like a guitarist. I like to use effects on it, fuzz, overdrive, etc., etc. So, uh, but I do, I do use this as a proper bass. You can do so much with it. You know, if a good bass player were to do that, it would sound much better. <laughs> I find myself using it a lot for chording, like in the Lila Rose project that I mentioned, I was using this for like chord passages. Yeah, you can do so much with this. Uh, you can turn on some uh, spring reverb and... especially with the strangle switch on. I 
I don't know. I love the upper register of that thing. Working on one of these is different from working on a bass. It's different from working on a guitar. So mm -hmm. is there anything that you ran into? I will say, I think one of, one of the top things that I mention in any bass six related chatter is that the strings that come on these from the factory are so light for what they're supposed to do. And we're expecting way too much out of an 84. That's that's the first thing that I really would say. And then everything else is, I don't know. It's it's just like a Jazzmaster or Jaguar in that you gotta angle the neck, get the bridge raised and, and you'll be good. Uh, strings and get the neck inclination figured out. And then I think from there, you can just, you just paint. You can just paint whatever whatever your personality wants on there. Well, talking to Mike made me feel a bit better about tearing into this thing. So before that confidence starts to wane, let's get into it. She's all disassembled, and I even went ahead and drilled out all the holes I needed for the mute, which thankfully went so much smoother than last time. So let's talk about what mods we're doing today. What what mods are you thinking about? Electronics, I'm going for the full suite of Curtis Novaks. The Novaks, I've installed tons of those in base sixes over the years, and the Novaks are like a very like accurate sort of pickup. And I would say they're maybe a little less low end specific but that just makes them stand out a little bit more in my ear. They have that nice like low mid growl, which really thickens up the instrument. Uh, and Curtis, Curtis is just the best. So absolutely, yes, I approve. So besides that, I'm gonna be putting in the normal CTS one meg pods. It's one meg pods in there, right? Uh, that's a good question. I think I think 250 was actually, I think my, my old article, I was looking at reissues. Uh, I would say if you plan to use yours as a bass bass, it probably you'd want to go for 250s instead of one meg. I bought my bass six to be my main singer-songwriter instrument. Yeah, if you're going to use it like that, I think one meg's probably the way to go. You've got a Jaguar. You've got other guitars that have that added brightness. So I, I, I bet this is going to fit in your whole rig a little bit nicer. So yeah, go for one meg. See, see if you like it. If you don't, it's just, it's all on a plate. It's so easy to change them. So the other things I'm gonna do are, I went with the mastery vibrato for the sole mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. stronger spring. Yeah, makes a big, big difference. The, uh, the vibrato used to be a mastery vibrato, which I have used on something else. So this is just an AVRI Fender, um, but it has, it has a much stiffer spring. I'm also putting a mastery bridge on it. Yeah. And I see mixed things online. What are your thoughts on the mastery bridge on the bass? Uh, it, it can work great. Uh, this had a mastery on it. It intonated perfectly. If I do this and my camera cooperates, the neck is shimmed. Mm -hmm. The neck is shimmed. I'm sorry, I'm blocking the microphone. The neck is shimmed <laughs> and the bridge is raised up off the body. It's, it's crucial to get it set up like that, even with the mastery bridge and the mastery worked perfectly on this. I never had intonation issues. I never had to worry about the strings pulling the bridge one way or another. Uh, it can work great. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it can work great. And I, I feel confident that with your level of ability, you will have no trouble at all. Or if you do, you'll be able to address it. The last thing that I'm adding on there is I want to put the mute on. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, that is going to be tricky. Well, if you're going to use a mastery, it might not be. No, it won't be because you the mastery is not the one inch bridge. So the the base six when it came out and mm -hmm. it was stuck and people didn't modify things quite so much. Uh, the stock uh, bridge was one inch wide, which is wider than the Jaguar bridge. So they had a special mute plate that was also wider and also had like sort of a diagonal slant. Not applicable to you. If you're going to use a mastery, then all you have to do is modify the holes. So our new parts are a set of Curtis Novak Base 6 pickups, a mastery bridge, a mastery vibrato, CTS 1 meg pots with a 0.047 orange drop capacitor, a set of LaBella round wounds, and last but not least, a Fender mute. So let's finish her up.
Okay, so it's been a few days now and I've had a chance to play and write on the newly upgraded Penelope. So the big question is, with all of this work and all of these parts, did I get everything I wanted? And in short, absolutely. She's every bit as responsive and versatile and expressive as I knew she could be. And I feel like I'm always finding new sounds and new ways to write every single time I pick her up. And on top of all of that, she's just so f***ing fun to play. A huge thank you to Mike. I learned so much and had so much fun talking to him and I can't thank him enough for all of his help. Uh, I, I would... I would love to take a spin on yours when you have it all worked out too. So Definitely. We should have a part two. I'd assume that most of you have already subscribed to Mike's channel and watched all of his videos just like I have, but just in case, be sure to check him out right here and in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Happy playing.